We're going to learn another form of generics now called uh, Impletrate, and it's um, it's quite interesting. Impletrate, by the way, doesn't mean that you type Impletrate all the time. Uh, you uh, you type like Impel and the actual name of the trait, maybe one trait or uh, you know partial org or you know debug or something like that. So it's uh, it's just like generics there where you say. Uh, you know, please take something as long as it uh, as, as as it's implementing these traits, and uh, so first let's um let's make sure that we remember how uh, generics work. So let's imagine that we have this uh, this name from a uh, from a character uh, from the Wheel of Time book series, and uh, let's say we have it in one form, and we also have it in another form. Which one? And then uh, what we would like to do is make this uh, this function called prints it, and we would like to print out uh, you know either uh, strings or stirs. And then here is where you know we we realize that we need generics because you know we would like to do this print it print it uh, name and print it string name. And this isn't going to work for both, and this isn't going to work for both either. But uh, fortunately, we know how to do this. We say, okay, uh, the type going in here is going to be a type T, some some sort of type, and um, it's going to implement display. So we'll bring that into scope. So we'll say, okay, input right there. So T will have display. And it will also have uh, into string because we want to just print uh, things that are you know stringy, and uh, we don't want to print like i thirty twos or or numbers. We're, we're imagining we just want to have uh, string stringish things. So we have that, and then now we just say input is going to be t, and then we'll print it. You can print many things, including that and then we print it out and this should work just fine now and there you go so uh, it's it's taking this type and it's taking it's taking a stir it's taking a string and everything's fine and now trait comes in and trait, by the way is um, is mostly is coolest when you're using it for output for input it's uh, it's kind of funny because it looks basically the same so we uh, it's just written a little bit differently so instead of declaring a t-type we'll say okay input is going to be impl display plus into string and that is actually going to do the same thing and uh, that was quite easy wasn't it so uh, it's, it's just saying you know the input is going to be something that has these two types uh, so you you figure it out and uh, you know that's pretty. Uh, that's an it's an interesting way to uh, to do generics in the uh, with in a different way. But that's not the point. That's not why. Uh, that's not why it exists. Like nobody would have made Impletrate if it was just you know generics with a with a different uh, signature because that would be kind of silly to have uh, two ways to do the same thing. What it's uh, what's cool about Impletrate is when you use it to return. And usually that means returning a closure, because closure, uh, as you know, it's um, you know it can have one of three traits, and uh, it has a it has a signature because it's uh, it's also a type of function. So we can say, for example, um, uh, let's see, i thirty two, i thirty two, and don't forget impl. So we could say, you know, this is the sort of uh, signature that you see when you're using impl trade a lot you say impl blah 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 i32 so this uh this means we're going to return a closure so we can actually have a function that creates a closure depending on um, on the input here and then uh and then it can be you know all sorts of uh, uh closures as long as it's uh you know it's got the same signature here so let's uh let's put one of those together uh, so let's put uh, returns a closure, a closure like that, and uh, we are going to say 
let's say we have this uh, this function and it's going to return things it's going to give a closure depending on the what the user types so it is going to give us a uh, a fn mute so we're going to return a uh, a closure that can uh, that can change numbers basically and it's going to return it as well so let's uh how are we going to do that let's match the input and the input is going to be a stir and let's say the user type is double so we would like to give the user a closure that will double things so we will uh, so we'll say okay here's your closure so uh this is uh it's going to take a mute number and uh, it's going to take uh, number times equals two because we are doubling it. And then it's going to say, your number is something number. And then it's going to give it back because we, uh, you know, the closure is returning an I32. So without this, it's going to, uh, it's going to make an error because uh, it's, you know, has to return the same thing. So it's, uh, you know, it's following the uh, the rules that uh, that that we're giving it, but inside there, you can make the closure into uh, you know a whole bunch of things. So we can do the same thing with triple. So if the user types triple, then we'll say number times times equals three, and we'll say triple. That's a big number. Now it's something, and then number, and then we give it back, and then after that. Um, you know, we're, we're doing a match, so we have to say to Rust, uh, you know, what, what are we going to do for anything else? And we'll say, uh, you know, sorry, I only understand uh, single and triple. Uh, here is your number back. And then we'll do that. Uh, here is your number, something back. Let's print it. And then hopefully that's not too long. And then number. So let's make sure that it's uh, that it's okay with that. And yes. So that is a function that returns a closure. So let's uh, let's test it out. Um, so that's closure one. So we're going to take this function returns uh, a closure, and we're going to put in single. And so now we have a closure, whoops, closure one, closure two. So we will give it triple. And then here we're going to say quadruple like that. And so, uh, you know, not, it's not going to show us anything here. It's just going to, uh, you know, make these closures for us. And then now we can, uh, now we have the closures and they are, you know, this, it'll take a number. So we need to uh, put that into it. Closure one. And we will say, let, uh, let number one equals closure one. And let's give it a 10. Uh, let uh, number two equals closure two. Uh, let's give it a 10 as well. And we'll do it uh, for the same one. Or we'll give it the same number for uh, closure three as well because they are all different closures they have the same uh, signature but they are actually different closures doing different things and so we uh, we created them here and then we uh, we called them here and uh, we forgot to uh, that's right make them mutable because it's an FN mute let's do that again and there we go so uh, Let's see. Do, 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 do. That's funny. How come it did? Uh, oh, double, triple. That's right. Not single. Double, triple, quadruple. So this time it should work. So there you go. So this uh, this understood the uh, the input double, and it gave us a uh, closure that uh, doubles it, and uh, and gives us this, and and gives it back. So these are actually numbers because it's uh, these are i thirty twos because. Uh, it's returning that as well, and uh, we can actually see that by uh, quickly debugging, you know, number three or whatever, and you'll see it's just, uh, it's literally just a number. Uh, there it is right there in the, uh, in the standard error. 
and so yeah uh, that is uh that's how you do it you um so just to make sure we know what, uh, what we're doing we uh, we use impl uh, choose the type of closure you want uh, make sure you specify what it'll return and then you can uh, you can just uh, make a make a closure with the um, without having to worry about uh, you know types or anything this is just like uh, you know creating closures on the fly that we did before and as long as it's doing um, you know returning what it should or not returning what it should not return then uh, then rust is not going to have a problem with it and if we put in a, uh, a semicolon there, that's where it's uh, it's going to say, "Hey, what's going on here?" It's um, you know that that's when it starts to uh, to complain. So uh, just make sure that uh, the the input and the output matches, and then you can use impl to uh, to make closures on the fly, and uh, that is also really cool.